me here. And I wanted to talk a little bit about rituals of rest and how it affects our nervous system when we don't get enough rest. And I know we've all felt that sensation of being on edge or being pumped or being constantly feeling like we're on and not having a chance to relax. Well, as a physician, I know that our bodies are built up to maintain a sense of homeostasis or balance. And we're not meant to be in a state of constant alert. We're not meant to always have that um, flight or fight or flight response activated. It's meant to be activated for short periods of time when we need it, and then for us to go back into a rest state. I feel that in today's society, that many of us are in a constant fight or flight or freeze response. Our adrenaline is up, our cortisol is up, and our nervous systems have become accustomed to being always on or on edge. And, you know, of course, as a doctor, I know that this has negative effects on us physically. This is also a way to describe stress and being constantly under stress, which we know can affect our blood pressure. It can affect our cholesterol. It can affect our weight. Um, this cortisol increase causes us to hold on to fat and to maintain uh, weight and to be overweight, which comes with its own set of issues, diabetes and, and other problems. But it also affects our mental well-being. It's hard to feel mentally well when we're always in a constant state of high alert. It provokes and breeds anxiety. It can also breed depression because we feel like we're never able to achieve what we're supposed to achieve because we're in a state of literally fear. <laughs> that, that's what our body does. And I noticed this even for myself. Many of you know that I work in urgent care in addition to being an entrepreneur and a life coach. And my urgent care shifts are PRN. So I choose how many shifts I want to do and when I want to do them. But believe me when I say that urgent care is a situation that puts you in that state of constant on edgeness for the entire shift. So for an entire 12 hours, there's this expectation that you're going to see four patients an hour. So not just see the patients, but take care of the patients, dispo them, do your charting, do everything. So it's a fast paced, rush, rush, hurry, hurry, do it, but do it extremely well because people's lives are on the line. So it's high pressure, high intensity for 12 hours straight. And you know maybe other people won't admit this to you, but I'll admit it. It is impossible for me to be on, on edge and a high state of urgency, um, a high state of accuracy and delivery for 12 hours straight. I am a human being and I cannot do that. Um, I think that you would need AI or a robot to be able to perform at that level. And, you know, we don't get breaks, but what I have had to do is I have had to create rituals of rest for myself because I cannot stay at that level uh, at a 10 out of 10 for 12 hours straight. It's just not possible for me. And maybe, you know, for some people they can do it. And then, but what are the consequences when you're done with your 12 hour shifts? How do you show up at home? How are you showing up in your health? How are you showing up with your mental health? if you're doing this on a consistent basis. And like I said, I'm only doing this a few times a month. There's some people who are doing this for good. I was one of those people. So what I've learned to do is to develop rituals of rest throughout my 12 hours. So whether or not I, I, you know, I don't have a dedicated lunch break, but I take a break and I eat. That's one of my rituals of rest. And one of the rituals of rest that I had, and I, I felt bad about it because I felt like, I was being unproductive and it wasn't a healthy way to cope. But now I realize it's actually a ritual of rest for me. Do you want to know what it is? It is scrolling through social media. And for a long time, I felt totally guilty about this until I talked to my life coach. And my life coach said, of course, you're exhausted. You need a break. You need to rest. Thank God you have the opportunity to spend five minutes scrolling through social media. 
because I was thinking I had to come up with something that was much healthier, um, that was much more profound. But what can I do? Literally, I can't go outside. I can't go for a walk. Um, Literally, one of the few things that I can do is just sit and take five minutes to scroll through a funny video, have a chance to laugh scroll through something where I feel like I'm connecting with my friends. I see what's going on with their life. It allows me the opportunity to feel like I am connected to the rest of the world. And I am not imprisoned in this place for 12 hours, having to work, 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 work. It gives me just enough of a break and a connection to reality, a connection to my dreams and my goals, even if I'm looking on my own page at some of the things that I've posted or some of the things that I have coming up. It gives me a chance to to be excited and to rest and to bring that 100 miles per hour down, even if it's just for five minutes. And then I can go back and continue the work that I am doing. So that's one of the rituals that I use during work is I take five minutes and I scroll through social media. The other one is I take 15 minutes and I eat. (laughs) Another one is I take a few minutes and I drink some water. Um, So I try to build these little rituals of rest in even when it looks impossible. So when I'm not working my 12 hour shift and I am having a busy day where I'm running my own business, I build bigger rituals of rest in. Uh, One of the things that I used to do pre-pandemic is I had a subscription where I went and I got massage or acupuncture twice a month. And I didn't do that. Um, I stopped. Of course, we all stopped most things during the pandemic. But after the pandemic, I didn't pick it back up. And I realized that I was feeling like I was going, 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 going all the time. And I needed to figure out, well, what was the change? And I realized that that was one of my rituals of rest that I had let go by the wayside. And so I picked that up again. And so I have blocks in my schedule where I know I have to schedule around that because it's a ritual, which means it's sacred. I'm not going to cancel it. It's hard to get those massage appointments, especially with the masseuse that you like. So it's in there. It's going to happen twice a month. And I have other things that I have built into my schedule. And that time, I'm very intentional and mindful that this is time for me to bring it down, to to be in a passive state of rest where I'm not thinking, I'm not doing, I'm not planning, I'm just being. And I'm allowing my body to recover. I'm allowing my mind to recover. I'm allowing my emotions to recover. So I'm in a state of passive recovery. So I encourage all of us to have rituals of rest, no matter what we're doing. Every single day, there has to be some sort of ritual built into your day that allows you to rest, that allows your nervous system to go from that fight, flight, or freeze response where it's on high alert to come down to, okay, everything is just fine. We're all good. There's nothing that has to be done right now. We're able to to just exist and be and rest. So that's another perspective on why we need rituals of rest. Our nervous system needs it. Our nervous system needs time to be in homeostasis, to come back to balance so that we don't have lots of negative effects on ourselves physically and mentally. So I just wanted to share that little information about why it's so important to have rituals of rest. I would love to hear from you what some of your rest rituals are. Feel free to comment below. Bye-bye for now.